Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Bricks Forge, Proforms, and webhooks. Yes, webhooks uh, in version 0 0.9.9, .9, which was released today on July 12th. Uh, the new webhook uh, functionality comes with the Proform. So what that means is we can send our form data outside of your website into some sort of uh, endpoint via webhook, and I'm gonna be using Pably Connect for this. So we're gonna take all this data and send it for processing elsewhere. Uh, and that, that's really powerful if you wanted to send it to Google Sheets, if you wanted to connect maybe to Slack or any other tool that uh, accepts webhooks, uh, you can connect the Proform and send that data out. So we're gonna look uh, about how all that works and the different technologies. Uh, before we get started, here's what we're gonna need. We're gonna need Proforms from Bricks Forge, the field IDs and the field names, and we're gonna need a webhook URL from Pably Connect, which is where we're gonna be sending this data, and then we're gonna need to map the field IDs uh, to the webhook inside the uh, Bricks Builder and the Proform settings. So let's dive in to the admin uh, and the back end and just take a look at Bricks Forge. So when you come to Bricks Forge, you'll uh, be presented with these different elements and extensions. Uh, there's some other customizing uh, options here, but we're going to be looking at elements and we're going to turn on Proforms. And then under extensions, we're gonna come and say form submissions. And this is going to allow you to store the form in the database. So you can see that inside uh, the admin here and you can tell it where you want this uh, menu to be. So we're gonna do, uh, let's just leave it as submissions and let's put it at the top here and click save. Refresh here and you'll see this submissions up at the top, and this is where you'll see all your form data come in. Uh, so that's just a little bonus here. Uh, what we really wanna look at is webhooks, but this is a really nice functionality here. We can store those form submissions in the database and then see them, download them, interact with those submissions. All right, so I'm gonna jump into the builder, and you'll see we've got a section, a container, and then a second container here that contains the Proform. So let's take a quick look at the Proform. We're gonna be looking at the fields, the actions, webhooks, and what you'll notice here is your actions will determine what's going to happen uh, down below. So if we don't have any actions, those contextual menus go away. If we add an action called uh, webhook, you'll see a new action uh, set of parameters here for the webhook. We're also going to be doing uh, create submissions, so we can go check that other one out. And we'll see our submissions here uh, down below. So fields and actions are really important uh, to get this all set up. So I'm going to make sure everything that I need in the action section is there before we get started messing around with our field. So if you wanted to add something else like send an email, uh, create a new post, update post, update the post meta, do all kinds of stuff. This is really cool right here. Add a new database option, update the option or delete the option gives you really granular control over data you're putting into your database. So that's a really neat tool there. Uh, but for this, we're just going to use webhooks and create submission. And let's see. Next, we're going to need to go into our fields and just kind of take a look at how this works. So if you want to add more form fields, you can click the Add button. You can go into each field and set the data type. Uh, this first one is the name, and that's a text. And then you'll see down here this form ID. This is really important, and I've created a little text document here that has the name, email, and message, and then mapped the form IDs. Because the form IDs control the data and how it moves about the different actions. So this form ID 
will interface with the webhook and tell it, hey, I want this data to go over here. And so you just need to grab those IDs and anytime you're working with BricksForge and you're, you're trying to figure out how to send data, the ID is generally what you're gonna look for to try and send that data to different places. We'll look at uh, the email. This is an email data type. It's required and it has an ID as well. You can give it a CSS class if you wanted to. And then the last one is the message field and it's a text area. It's also gonna be required and it will have its own ID. A new item here in this version, I believe is this conditions. So you could set different conditions on when to display or hide this field. We're not going to get into that today, uh, but that is in the change log. So go check that out because that makes this form really powerful. Um, for example, you could set a URL parameter uh, and show a form field probably on a URL parameter. I'm not, I'm not going to explore that, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do that. I don't see why you wouldn't. All right, so we've got our field set up here. We've got our form ready, and we need to go dive in and look at what this action and uh, webhook is expecting. So we've got our action set up with webhooks. So let's dive in and see what we have here. So when you open it up, you're presented with just add a new webhook. So you click add, and then you have some new parameters to fill out. The first one and a very important one is your webhook URL. So I'm going to hop over to Pabli Connect here, and I'm going to create a workflow. And this is going to be a very simple Bricks Forge webhook. I'm going to create that workflow, and it's as easy as that. And we'll choose our trigger, like what happens with this workflow. And the first thing that you're presented with here is a webhook. I'm going to select that, and it's going to give us a URL to add uh, how we want to integrate our application over with Pabli. So we copy that and come back over to the builder and drop that in. And that's how you link the uh, URL for the webhook in the builder with your automation tool. Uh, if you're not familiar with Pabli, it's an alternative to Zapier. It's a little cheaper. Once I create that, it's going to wait for the response. So it's going to wait for this form to send off data. Right now, it's not going to send anything because we haven't configured it. So we'll dive through the rest of these. The HTTP method is going to be the default. Although, if you wanted to post, get, <laughs> delete, or patch, every HTTP uh, method you could want is right there for updating data uh, using a webhook uh, endpoint. Content type is either JSON or the form data. I, I'm just going to use the defaults because uh, that's all we really need to do. We're just sending this very simple data over. And then we'll map our data. I don't think we need to add headers. I need to read the documentations a little bit more to see when we would want to add headers. Uh, but I don't think we need to add headers right now. And honestly, I'm not sure what HMAC headers are for. I think maybe that would be to help validate your webhook. Uh, I need to read a little bit more about that. Uh, but right now, for what we're going to do is just get this data out of the form and send it over to this uh, third party is these defaults here. So HTTP is default. Content type is default. And then we're going to map our data. So we're going to have three items. This first one is going to be name, and then we're going to put our field ID right here. So go grab your uh, field ID from your text document. Pop that there. We'll add the next one. This is going to be email. And let's grab this ID right here. Pop that in. And add the third item, which is going to be the message and get the third ID for that one. And that's really it. That's all you have to do. So it, it makes it quick and easy if you can go ahead and map what your fields are and what your IDs are and hit save. 
So I think this is going to work. Let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to refresh the page. And I'm doing this all live, so you're going to see right here with me. Um, this is going to be... Bobby Light. His email address is blight at gmail.com. And webhooks are powerful is going to be our message. So when we send this over, it sent the message. We got our success. I'm going to hop over to Pabli and see what happens. And then it captured... <laughs> It captured the response. I mean, it's just that easy. So now that we've got the data, we've got the webhook response, we can start doing whatever we want. Um, you can go choose your next action, and there's a ton of actions. Um, search for a few here. You can send something to Slack. Let's see, Google Sheets. You could uh, send data to Google Sheets, create a Google contact. Um, anything you really want. Uh, Google My Business, you know, that's a new one that Pabli's opened up for uh, review, automated review with ChatGPT they've been doing. So uh, just a ton of different options here. So this is the data, and that's what you need. You need to get it out of Bricks Forge, out of Bricks Builder, off of your website, and send it over uh, somewhere else to use it. Um, just see if I can spot anything that I've used before. Asana's here. What else we got? Man, there's a bunch. Bitbucket. A bunch of these I don't even know. Some S I wonder if there's some SMS. Yeah, there's some different SMS. Shorty SMS is there, so maybe you could take this data and, you know, send send an SMS message, whatever you want. Really, the coming up with what you want this automation to do is, you know, the fun part. Man, there's just so many things. Oh, maybe Trello. Yeah, you could create a Trello card, like, hey, I've got a new client, if you're really looking at free stuff. But anyways, that response came through. Uh, we can submit another one. Test number two. So we'll send a second test. Um, what you want to do is say recapture webhook over here so it'll listen and it's going to drop all your data, but it'll say, hey, I'm listening for that response to come across and send that. And then let's see if we can go see if it's going to pop up. All right, it got that second response and there you go. Bricks Forge is amazing. This is so cool. I, I get really excited. If you've watched any of my videos, this stuff gets me super excited because this is what value you can bring to one of your clients where they have a problem. They're like, you know, we're getting all these forms, but you know, I always forget my email uh, and my login to my WordPress, and I don't really like the WordPress. I just kind of wish it would just go to my Google Sheet or go to my uh, WhatsApp or whatever you want, wherever you want to send this data. And you can start building out these solutions for your clients and show value. You can automate things that, uh, you know, a small local business had never dreamed of automating. And it's really not that difficult. You just need to take the time to see how these different technologies work. And really, it's that easy. You put your URL, you map your field with the IDs, and you're done. It's it's that easy. And then you have some advanced options here that are, you know, things that I'm going to need. Here, you can even debug in the console to go see what, well, let's go see what that looks like. We got time. I'm only 15 minutes in, and I know y'all are nerding out on this just like me, so let's go see what happens here in the console test. So let's open up the console, bring this over here, send it over, and hopefully, oh, looky there, we have a webhook result. 
There's the URL, which I'm going to blow away so that doesn't exist anymore. And let's see, what all do we have here? We have a ton of data. I, I'm not even sure what all this data is here. But we can see what we need to see here um, with uh, BricksForge and debugging that. So I'm going to dive into that later and see what all we get. Um, I kind of would expect to see the actual data that came across, and I'm not really sure where that is. But I bet it's in here somewhere deep down in all of this uh, data, so we will not waste too much more time looking at that. I'm going to go and figure out where that information is later and update you if I find out anything uh, worth updating. But anyways, uh, we need to go back and check out our submissions as well. I'm pretty sure these would uh, come over here. So now when we turned our submissions on, we've got our page that the uh, data came from, and it was a page that I called webhooks. We have the form ID here. We have the date and then the data that came across. So we've got our email message. Um, it'll pop up and say you have three new submissions. I think you can, after you open this up, I'm not sure, I think maybe you mark all as red or maybe you can mark one as red uh, to clear out those submissions, but you can delete them, you can search, you can change the column visibility here. So if you have other forms with more columns, uh, you might have more data over here and you can control all of that. You can come and filter by your form. I bet you can change that form name. Let's see. I wonder if you can just change the ID and that changes it. Test form. I don't know. We'll see. It looks like that ID is going to be hard-coded there. I bet you can change it. There's got to be a way to change that. I don't know. I don't know if you can change that. Ah, oh, form title. Test form. Let's see if that works. Ha, that's where it is. So you can go override that uh, and create all your different forms and then see that data just like that. So that's really all I wanted to show today. I'm really excited about uh, the future of Bricks Forge. We're not even at version one and we're doing some crazy stuff. Uh, so let me know in the comments uh, how you're using Bricks uh, Forge Pro Forms or if you even knew that this was available and out there. And uh, if you have any questions, drop those down in the comments. If you find this content valuable, uh, like and subscribe helps me out uh, to help monetize and fund this channel. And I will keep putting uh, more content like this out and answering the questions that you have. Uh, Bricks Forge, can't recommend it enough. I use it on all my sites that I'm developing on because of the powerful uh, ProForms, uh, replaced some of my other form plugins. And uh, yeah, it's just really fun to work with and really fun to see uh, what you can do. And once you get your data over to something like uh, Pably, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. Start storing this data in your CRM whatever your uh, brain can come up with. So I uh, hope you found uh, some value in this and uh, props to uh, Bricks Forge and team and uh, Daniel over there, uh, the developer doing amazing work. And I just, I just love building with Bricks Builder and all these powerful add-ons. All right, let me know what you think and have a great rest of your day. See you next time.